Welcome. My name is Penelope Chatterton. Welcome to Awaken the Dream. My friends, I have a guest today. Her name is Cynthia Francis Bacon. She's a quantum healer slash <laughs> psychic. And this is kind of fun for me. When she came through the door, she had a big smile. She's happy-go-lucky. And I could just tell I'm going to have an easy time sitting with Cynthia. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Cynthia. Thank you for having me. And you know, we we hadn't met before right now. We talked on the phone, and yes. immediately we laughed. That's and right. And that's all I know. That's right. And also, we have a lot in common. We're Tauruses, that's Tor right. I, or whatever they call them. Yes. And we both are very involved in quantum physics healing. Yes. Uh, I just did a couple of shows where I'm, I'm just an avid um, um, admirer of as, as Mitt Goswami, who, who is the big scientist who is writing all these books, and I'm inspired by it. So you just are falling right into my lap at the perfect time. So just for me to stop talking, tell us how you got into this field, and as I said before the show, were you the easy child or were you the oddball in your family? I was family? odd. <laughs> Okay. I kept saying, can't you be normal? <laughs> That's the sentence my children, my mother, you know, over the years. But um, what can you do when you start thinking in elementary school about what life is when everyone's playing basketball, you know? Exactly. That was Traditional background? Did you? Yeah, I'm Italian-American family, part English, obviously Francis Bacon. Yeah. And um, But mostly I was brought up in Italian. You in know. the Italian manner, yes, yes. which I have no idea what that's like. It's very fun, but very crazy at times, so <laughs> you definitely work hard to find your voice in an Italian family. Everyone's talking. <laughs> yes, no one's listening, but we're having a blast eating. <laughs> so oh. that's the Italians, you know. And, um, but uh, Do you go to church? I used to. Uh, see, I come from a very Catholic background. Okay. And I used to go to church every day. Every so, day? I mean, every day. Um, and that was my journey. You know, I started having physical visitations at the age of 18, Paramahansa Yogananda, yeah. Jeshua over the years, different angels. And I've been on and off my psychic ability and some of the things that would happen to me would sporadically happen on and off through my life, except in 1997. But it didn't have anything to do with the Catholic background, or it was were you... my. Believe it or not, I was. Um, I used to make the rosaries for the missions, ah. and so it was when I was always praying the rosary. All these things happened. Which so was things funny. just came to you, yeah, in your religious state, and your. It was always when I was meditating and praying that I would have all these Perfect. miracles. That I makes did. that makes sense. Yeah, and um, but you know, people think oh they have to say formal prayers, but what are we doing? We're mantering an energetic thought form. Yeah. That's why I tell people, create your own mantras, change your life. Yeah. It's all just, you know, you, you think this way, stamp another thing to it. You think this way, create another thought. And you keep creating and, and um, you know, uh, rejecting the negative, creating a new thought and a new vision. And yeah. guess what? You create a new reality. Yeah. And um, so in 1997, I ended up going to New York. That's the weekend Princess Diana had died and was being buried in Mother Teresa. Really? So I was in St. Patrick's Cathedral and I walk in and here I think there'd be pictures of Princess Diana and Mother Teresa and everywhere is St. Teresa the little flower. There's pictures everywhere. I'm getting <laughs> hit with holy water by priests. I mean, we're sitting there, me and my girlfriend, you know, um, we're sitting there going, what is this? This is amazing, you know. So I went to the, the Mass, obviously. I loved them both. And um, so what happened was that night, I had a dream. I started talking to the woman in the church, and she was an advocate that the 100th year anniversary of St. Teresa's death was coming up in October. And so I had a dream of St. Teresa that night. She was hugging and kissing me. Oh. And this was so funny because, I, you know, I was online and got myself a hotel, <laughs> and we go in and there's bars and you hear <laughs> the 
this is the craziest part near the theater district and oh, <laughs> that gosh. I could have ever gone to. Oh, my gosh. And um, so I wake up the next morning. I said, We've, I've been blessed by St. Teresa. I said, this is a miraculous trip. Something's going to happen. Little did I know that my friend was battling what she thought was cancer, oh. bladder cancer, and she never discussed it. Did she open up to she you? She never opened up. I never knew that she had all these tests that were showing that she had Bladder cancer. cancer. Yeah. And um, so she was going to go home to have the final um, test, a biopsy. And so here we have been inundated by St. Teresa. I'm having dreams of her. We're getting hit by holy water. We're in St. Patrick's Cathedral. <laughs> so on the plane, on the way home, I said to her, we, you know, I used to call myself the Novaholic of the North Shore because I come from Reading, Mass. I had more novenas, about 50. Anyone had a problem on there like this? What do you need? I knew all the saints. I've studied all their lives. Oh so I gave goodness. her a prayer card to St. Teresa. I said, why don't you say novena? Because I thought at the time she was having boyfriend problems. Ah. So, and a novena, um, if you help for our friends know, who might not know what that actually means. A novena is a, a prayer that you, stay, you say, sometimes a certain time, but you say nine times. In ask, you know, requesting from okay. God, and then nine times in Thanksgiving. So you're doing an 18 day prayer, ah. and you set an intention. But what is that? I mean, that's a mantra. What are we doing? We're changing energy. Yeah. The same thing. Yeah. Doesn't exactly. have to be the Our Father. Doesn't have to be the Hail Mary. It can be whatever it is you want. Yeah. But you say it and you repeat it, and you will change a pattern in your life. Wow. So I gave her the novena to Saint Teresa because of that experience in the church. So I didn't know she was having these problems. So later, a month or so later, she called me up and said, you know, I said a novena to St. Teresa to save my life. I said, what do you mean? And oh. she told me about everything. Yeah. So she said the novena, and she had bought a house in Reading, Mass. And um, what happened was there were rose bushes all in the summer that never bloomed. Now, this is oh. in the end of September, beginning of October now, yeah. and frost is on the ground. And when she finished the novena, all the roses oh. bloomed in the backyard. I understand. And when she had the biopsy, the doctor called up stuttering that she was as healthy as a horse. He had no idea what all these tests meant. Oh. So she, she, changed. she gets a healing through St. Teresa, and I became nonstop clairvoyant, clairvoyant, and clairsentient. It's never left me. I can access it at any time. Since 1997. Yeah. You just Since stepped up to the plate to be the real Cynthia Francis <clears throat> Bacon. Well, actually, it was only till this year that I actually started doing psychic and medium readings yeah. because I've seen such a change in people when they get closure, when they get to talk to a loved one, when they get to talk to an angel, they get to find out their life purpose, when they get a little help. Because you know what? The most problematic thing in society right now is that people are we're desperately lonely. Yeah. We're lonely for what we understand on a very deep cellular level. Yeah. We have a memory of what our life used to be yeah. before the fall. Yeah. So in our loneliness, that's why some people can get, um, you know, they can go on the wrong path yeah. because forces there. You know we're dealing with good and yeah. dark at we all are times. On this earth plane that's where right. conditioning. Of the mind is, mm -hmm. it's ferocious. It's it's got everything. I know, and and because of the challenges, that's why it's very hard for some people that they have they mean well. They sometimes go down the wrong path, but is it that they're so bad, or is it because they're so lonely? They yeah. try. Why do people do drugs? Yeah. I can guarantee you, the deep reason they do it is because they want to feel light out of the body. Yeah. They don't realize meditation can do that in two minutes. Yes, they better don't. than any high. That's until they start meditating, they realize, oh my God! But a, basically, they're trying to become more spirit because yeah. they have a memory, innate yeah. memory. I like that slant too, because alcohol, drugs, food. I mean, to think people are trying to feel better. I mean, to to understand it that way, I think is very important and important for the people that are that are reaching in the wrong direction to know they can change their minds. And the best part is that most of these people that have alcoholic problems, some of them are very divine masters. Yeah. Some people come in this planet, they have a very hard time with the energy. Yeah. So we can't judge because you have no idea who these people are of yeah. why they have gone down that road, what they're trying yeah. to to access. Yeah. But they don't realize that through simple meditation, yeah. you can access it all beyond anything. That it helps us be can. graceful, too, to extend grace. I have a friend who once said to me, you never know what another soul is, is working on. You don't know what another soul is expected to do. Because sometimes we can't know someone. We can only send grace and understanding, and that can help them make that shift. Well, that's interesting because as a quantum healer, and again, 